everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about something I did almost two, no, three and a half weeks now. Um, three and a half weeks ago I went in uh, to cowpoke to change out my cartilage earring. Um, the post was too long so, I, and while I was there I was like, you know, I really am itching for a new piercing, something I've thought about for a while. So the next day I went in and I got my triple forward helix pierced. Now, I have a bunch of questions written down here that I thought um, would be most useful for those of you who are thinking about getting a triple forward helix piercing. So I'm just going to talk about my experience, what I do to take care of it. Um, where I went, how much it cost, things like that. So the first question that I wrote down was, what is a triple forward helix? So I'll, first I'll show you the piercing. So this right here is, whoop, one's a little out of place. Ow. Yeah, it's still a little tender, but this is the triple forward helix. I don't know if you can see. Some people just get one um, forward helix done. Um, other people can get three or two. Uh, I chose to do three. So yeah, that's just what it looks like. I'm trying to zoom in for you guys. But yeah, so that's a triple forward helix. It's just the front part of your ear. Um, what part or what side works best um, really doesn't matter. The piercer will take a look at both sides and he or she will determine which one has like more area, more room. Um, and depending on and if you have any other jewelry, he'll take that or he or she will take that into account. Sorry, I got pierced by a guy, so that's why I keep saying he'll. Um, so they'll take a look and see which one will work better. Um, they determined that this one was going to work better for me. Um, he also, if you notice, my hairline comes down just like right about to where like the bottom piercing hits. So when my hair is down, you can't see it because my hair is in the way. So he was like, you know, that's, um, you're really never going to be able to see it unless your hair is up. And I mean, during the summertime, my hair is always up because it's just, it's long, it's thick. I don't feel like dealing with it in the summer. But anyways, he recommended that I do something like right here. Yeah, that's still, okay. I probably just drew on my ear. No, I didn't. Not too bad. So he recommended that I do something here. Um, something three, three across and I was like, oh my god, that looks like it'll hurt. Uh, so I'm just going to stick with the triple forward helix. And he was like, actually it's the same cartilage, so throwing that out there, there's always that option too. For those of you who maybe you're, maybe you have smaller ears and the triple forward helix won't work on, with the, on you, with you, on you, whatever. Um, so this one would definitely work. Ow, it's really sore right now. I was hanging clothes up and it ripped the earring forward and then I just had to push it back as you saw so anyways where did I go uh, so I am from Buffalo New York so I went to cowpoke um, they have two locations one in Williamsville I believe and then one on Elmwood I went to the one on Elmwood and I don't know cowpoke they're just like really great they have like a very safe um, calm friendly environment I went and got my tragus pierced there so I'll show you Again, you probably can't see it because of my hairline, but that's my tragus. Um, I had no problems with my tragus getting pierced, and I just thought I'd go back there since I've already been pierced by them before and had such a great experience. So that's why I decided to go there. Um, how much did it cost? So if you do one, it's 30 bucks for the piercing, not for the jewelry. Um, so if you do one, it's 30 And if you do the piercings one at a time, it'll end up being $90. But... If you do all three at the same time, they give you a, give it to you at a discount of sixty dollars at Cowpoke. They really encourage um, you to do all three at once rather than one at a time, and like one, do one, let it heal, do a second one, let it heal. Because by the time they, this is how they explain it to me. Um, by the time the first one is done healing, and then you pierce the second one, um, it'll irritate the first one. And so then you're dealing with two. So if you just get all three pierced at once, you're just dealing with the same healing process just for three different piercings. Um, what was my experience like? So I went in with my boyfriend, David, for moral support. I'm a fainter, so that's really, like, I really wanted him there uh, just in case I did faint and I wasn't able to drive home. I didn't want to get stranded out there. Um, because I am a fainter, I always have some sort of sugary drink with me just to sip on while I'm waiting, uh, while if 
if I can, like while the piercing's happening. Um, I'm a vasovagal reactor, so basically if my body thinks that I'm in danger, it kind of just shuts down. It's I don't know how to describe it, but that's and maybe that's not what vasovagal is, but that is typically like in those types of situations, that's when I have a vasovagal reaction. Um, that happened when I got my belly button pierced, uh, passed right out like two hours later. Don't even know why, but they just determined it to be vasovagal. Um, I had an experience at college where something bad was happening and really did what I needed to do, helped the person, and then passed right out. So if my body senses danger, it just, I, for some reason, it just, it just doesn't want me to deal with it. I don't know how else to describe it, but I've been a lot better. Um, the sugary drinks really help. Um, usually I'll go to like to Panera beforehand and have like mac and cheese, like in a Red Bull, a nice, like thick, carby loaded meal, um, just so that I have food in my stomach and then I'll get like a lemonade or an iced tea. Um, orange juice and apple juice are really good. And so, I'll, again, I'll just sip on that. So I was waiting, drinking my iced tea, and then they called me back. The whole process took about 15 or 20 minutes, only because they are piercing three different times. Um, when he called me back, uh, he showed me that the jewelry was, like, sanitized. Um, I had to sign this little piece of paper. It was like a color indicator thing that indicated when the jewelry was sanitized. So it, everything looks good. Everything looks according to how it should have. Um... And so he sat me down and he like dotted my ear three times with like this purple um, like ink just so that he could see like where he needed to pierce. I took a look at it. It looked good. I laid down on the table and then he pierced it. So he asked me to inhale and then on the exhale he was going to pierce it. So I <laughs> took my time with the inhale because I was fairly nervous about this because my cartilage piercing hurt quite a bit. And I knew that this was the same cartilage so... I was like freaking out and to get it pierced three times um, I was really worried that I was gonna faint um, so I was laying down I took breathed in and then I paused for a second and then started breathing out and he pierced it I'm not going to lie this piercing hurt the most I have had 12 piercings so far 11 of them are still in I have three on my lobe I have my cartilage um, my tragus and now my triple forward helix. I also have my belly button pierced, but I don't have that anymore um, So out of all of them Including my belly button this one hurt the most out of hands down now Everybody has a different pain tolerance So I'm not saying that this is going like you're gonna have the same pain tolerance that I do when I was deciding to get it I texted my friend and was like hey did this hurt? She was like absolutely not it was so great and so I texted her and I was like, you lied to me, like, and this was so painful, but I was totally kidding because I knew everybody had different pain tolerances. Um, but I think if you go in there expecting to feel pain, it won't be that bad. Like, you're going to feel some sort of pain. Um, so, yeah, you just got to weigh, weigh your options. If you, some people have high pain tolerance, some don't. Um, I definitely am not one of those people. I have a very low pain tolerance, um, so... I mean, I survive, so. But if you don't think that it's for you, then don't do it. Aftercare. So, Cowpoke gives you um, this little thing of soap. Um, that when they give it to you, they tell you, like, how to wash it. You just put a pea-sized amount on your finger at the end of your shower when your hands are nice and clean. Um, and you just kind of, like, set it up on the top one. I rub it all around just to make sure that it gets all three piercings and then you just let the water hit it and just let it wash it away don't take a q-tip to it don't take a cotton ball to it don't do anything just set it on there and let the water hit it um they also recommend using green tea um i bought two of these and used it a lot when um like that first week and a half when it was still like really sore to like even smile um i use this quite a bit they want you to put Take some hot water, dip the tea bag in, and then just place it directly on your ear. Um, green tea has nice um, antioxidant like benefits. I think it's antioxidant. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but they wrote a whole blog post about why this is so good to put on your earring. And so I'll put that down in the description down below. But I definitely use this, and I will forever use this on like future piercings. I want to get one more because it bugs me that I have like 11 piercings and not 12. I hate odd numbers. I don't know what it is. But... Now I'm just like, I need one more, like, to, for it to be 12, but I don't know. I think everybody would kill me if I did. Um, other things that I have used in the past for other piercings, I've gone to multiple different uh, piercings slash tattoo shops. 
and this is just what I have found to work on my ears. Um, I I can't like recommend this to you because I'm not a professional piercer. So definitely always, always, always consult your piercer first before trying anything that I say works for me. Um, but anyways, I'll get into them. The first is Bactine. I use this on my cartilage when I got my cartilage pierced. Uh, when I got my cartilage pierced, I went to the Pink Armadillo in ah, Brockport. And they didn't give me any soap or anything. And so I was about to go and get some. And my friend's like, oh, try Bactine. Um, I used that on my belly button when I got my belly button pierced. And it worked fairly well for me. Um, I didn't have any issues with my cartilage healing. My cartilage is fully healed five years later um and I, it's like pain relieving too so that was really nice it would make like any soreness go away which i loved because my cartilage took forever to heal um and then the next thing that i also like to use is tea tree oil i had a lot of keloids with my tragus only because i was putting earbuds in and ripping them out and it was just not good during the healing process so i got a couple of keloids um and when I went to the Pink Armadillo in Brockport to see what was going on, they're like, oh yeah, you got some keloids. Like, we recommend putting some tea tree oil on it. Like, the minute you put it on it, it's like, oh my god, it just feels so much better. And you're like, why would you put oil on a piercing? Like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. But it's actually, it, it works. Like, tea tree oil is known to have very, like, anti, like, a lot of antibiotics um, benefits to it, as well as, like, green tea. So, this is also what works for me, um... If my tragus ever acts up, I always put this on it and then maybe a little bit of Bactine, but. So these are just the products that I typically use when I have a piercing. So, so yeah, so that's how I take care of it. <sighs> how much time is left? I got like three minutes to wrap this up. Okay, um, how long does it take to heal? Uh, I can't change the jewelry for a year. They gave me a little card that said so, um, but I think it takes six months. I'm only three weeks into the piercing, so I can definitely do a follow-up video and let you know, um, how my, it, how it is healing. If that's something you want to see, let me know. Um, can it be hidden? I mean, your hair can hide it, but your hair has to be down all the time. I guess you could get, like, clear, um, things to put inside rather than, like, actual, um, studs. Um, other than that, if you're not supposed to get, like, if your job doesn't allow you to get piercings or tattoos, like, don't do it. Um, it's not worth it. Thankfully, I have a job that I can have piercings and tattoos, so it works. Oh, something with the cost. So, I mentioned, so I paid $60 for the piercing, but it ended up being, like, $120, $150, um, with all the jewelry, because you had to pay for three separate earrings. Um, and again, that cost can vary. Initially, I was gonna, it was gonna be, like, over $300, because I chose, like, 14 karat, like, rose gold, um, jewelry for each one so it's a hundred dollars a piece and so i was just like oh my god like i can't pay that so i just went with standard studs and i'll switch them out like if i have like gradually so that i'm not paying three hundred dollars all at once but yeah so that was it with the cost um i don't know i think that was everything that i just wanted to tell you about i had a really positive experience if you have any further questions feel free to ask them in the comments below i will absolutely get back to you um I'd love to hear like what you what you guys think. Um, if you guys want to see like a follow up video of like all my piercings, um, I have a couple tattoos. I could do like a tattoo video. Um, I don't know. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.